Welcome everyone to Tor Transform and a Pen in the Power Query Editor. My name is Emily. Today, we're gonna explore the Power Query Editor, a powerful tool available in both Excel and Power BI. I'm gonna demo in Excel. If you're a Power BI user, the interface looks very similar. As long as you're willing to look in some different locations on your screen for some of the same buttons, you're more than welcome to follow along in Power BI instead. You might be wondering, what is the Power Query Editor? The Power Query Editor makes it easy to get your data optimized for reporting. Where can you find the Power Query Editor? You could find it in Excel, Power BI, and some other Microsoft programs. It's integrated seamlessly. Behind the scenes of the Power Query Editor is the mQuery formula language. It's a powerful tool for data transformation. I'm going to encourage you to check out our Excel Bootcamp. This bootcamp offers numerous demonstrations specific to using the Power Query Editor and many more awesome advanced features that people don't know about. Are you ready to see the Power Query Editor in action? Let's head to my computer and check it out. If you wanna follow along, go ahead and pause this video and then click the link in the description below to get the file so that you can follow along with me. Once you've got the file open and ready, click play and let's dive in together. We're gonna click on the data tab up here at the top and that is where you will find the get data button. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that button and I can see all the different options that I have for bringing my data in. The data that we're gonna be bringing is a CSV file that I've already saved to this computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and say from file and it is a text CSV. So I'm gonna select that option. Here you will see I've already mapped my file path to exactly where my files are. The information is being stored into two different files. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by bringing in Allison and clicking import. Up next pops a window that is a preview of what the data looks like. I've got the ticket numbers. I've got information about where these tickets are coming from, as well as how long it took to resolve the ticket. And I've got a couple options down here. Load would send this data straight into my Excel desktop. I don't want to do that. I want to clean it up first. So I'm going to go ahead and click this transform button to open up the Power Query Editor. It is important to note that the Power Query Editor is a whole entire different window than the Excel desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and click this button up at the top just to show you that it is a whole entire different window. Right now, I'm gonna get my data cleaned up here before I do anything to get it into my worksheets back here inside of the desktop. At the moment, I only have that document for Allison. So I do wanna bring my other file in here. In order to get my next file, I need to click on a new source. I have another file and it's a CSV as well. And this time I want to click on my call center feedback for Greg and import that data. I get to see a preview, which looks just the same as Allison's, except for this is Greg's data and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now you can see I've got both of my queries. I wanna take a second to just give you a little bit of tour of the Power Query Editor, just so that you can get familiar with it before we actually start doing any transformation. Over here on the left side of your screen, you see this queries pane. This is where you will see all of the different queries that you have brought in. You can manage, rename, and organize them here. On the next section, we've got our data preview right here in the middle of your screen. This is the central area that displays the preview of your data. It's where you can see the results of your transformations and just ensure all of your data looks correct. The next thing that we're going to talk about is this formula bar right above our data preview. This shows the M code for that particular step or that particular transformation that happens to your data. It's useful for just understanding what transformation was actually applied to your data set. The last thing that I really want to cover is this applied steps over here in this query settings on the right side of your screen. The applied steps lists all of the transformations that have been applied applied to your data. You can click on each step to review or modify as it happened, but the applied steps ensures that any new data coming in during a refresh will undergo the same transformations, keeping your data set accurate and consistent. This list continues to grow as we apply more transformations to our queries. We're going to go ahead and head to Allison's 
query, the first one in our queries pane. And the first thing that I always want to do whenever I bring in my data into the Power Query Editor is check my data types. Typically, it's okay for anything that looks like this, our issue category, to be a text. And typically, you would see numbers and think that it would be okay for these numbers to be identified as a whole number. But things that are descriptive data, such as a ticket number is describing what that ticket is, or a zip code that is describing where that ticket took place, we actually want to switch these data types over to a whole number in case any leading zeros exist in our column of data. Whenever it's a whole number, leading zeros drop off. So we're going to click on this one, two, three, and we are going to swap our zip code from whole number to a text data type. You will see a warning window pop up because originally the Power Query editor brought in our data and assumed some of these data types. The question is, do you want to replace the current step or add a new step? I don't need to add a new step because I want to make sure those leading zeros stay in. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the current step I am on. I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing for my ticket number. I'm going to replace that step as well as my customer number. All three of these things are going to be columns that I will never be using these numbers to aggregate. So it's going to be really important that they just are identified as a text. That way, leading zeros never disappear. The next thing that I want to do to transform this data is I noticed I've got a date received and a date resolved. That means some of these tickets are taking more than a day to resolve. And I'd like to add a column in here that actually tells me how long it's going to take to resolve a ticket. We're going to go up here to the top to our Add Columns tab. There are several ways to add columns in the Power Query Editor. That doesn't mean that one way is more right than the other, but I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to build a column using the custom column button. So go ahead and click on custom column where we will have a window pop up. I'm going to go ahead and name my column. I'm going to call it duration and I'm going to perform a simple uh, subtraction of our two different dates to determine how long those tickets have been open. So I'm going to start with that date resolved and insert that in. And then I'm going to add a minus sign. And I'm going to say subtract date received. Go ahead and insert that column as well. It says no syntax errors have been detected. I am going to click OK. And just like that, I have built a column that has the duration of how long these tickets have been open. Um, I do want to change that data type from an ABC123. I'm going to go with a decimal number. If I ever want to average these, I think a decimal number might be a little bit easier. All right. The last thing that I want to do to this data is I notice that this data is Allison's data, but I don't have a column in here indicating who this belongs to. We are going to add one more column. This time we're going to do another custom column. So go ahead and click on custom column. We're going to name this column employee. And in order to enter a text inside of the employee column, we need to use quotation marks. And I'm going to say this is coming from Allison. So I'm going to type in Allison's name. No syntax errors have been detected. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I've got my employee. I'm going to swap that over to a text. And now this data has an identifier so that I know that it is going to belong to Allison. Going to go ahead and move over to Greg's query next. It is very important when you append data, you want to make sure your column structure is exactly the same. That means you want your column names to be the same as well as your data types for those columns because you're stacking your data one table on top of another. So that means they need to align perfectly. Thinking back to what we did with Allison's query, we're going to do some of the similar things to Greg. First things first, check our data types. We're going to shuffle these whole number data types to a text and replace our current step. Let's change the zip code to a text, replace the current as well as that customer number. I do want to identify this table as Greg's table and Greg's data rather than Allison. So let's go ahead and build that custom column. We're going to name this employee and we are going to type in Greg. Click OK. 
I build in that column with Greg's information and I'm gonna swap it to a text. Now that we've got our data set up with the same column structure, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to combine these two tables of data into one using Power Query. Instead of copying and pasting, we're gonna use Power Query to append the data. This method allows us to easily refresh the data and include new records from both CSV files containing Allison and Greg's call center feedback. To begin our append, we're gonna go ahead and click back on the home tab where we have different options to combine our data. We're going to take a closer look at this append query. So I'm going to click the drop down menu where you can see I have two different options. I either have the option to append queries or append queries as new. What append queries as new is going to do for you is it's going to create a new table, which can be useful if you need to reuse some of that combined data and multiple queries or reports. I will tell you it might duplicate the loading process, um, potentially impacting performance performance, especially with large data sets. So there is that other option of just clicking append queries. This append queries data, append your data directly to an existing table, which can be more efficient and simpler, reducing the complexity of your query dependencies. For the sake of this class, I'm going to go ahead and click append queries as new because I want you to see what it looks like to add a whole extra query in here. When I go ahead and click new, you can see I can combine two tables. I actually can combine more than two if I had more than two, but I've got Greg's data. My second table is going to be Allison's. That means Greg's is naturally going to be on the top based on how I have this set up, like, okay. And just like that, we have Allison's data as well as Greg's data, but now it is in one giant table. I'm gonna scroll over and take a look because our column structure was the exact same. All of our columns are lining up. We can tell the difference between what data came from who in this instance where I've got all of this data coming from Allison and then all of this data on the top coming from Greg. I did not build that duration column in Greg's table. So whenever it appended Allison's data to Greg's, Allison's data brought over that duration information, but then Greg's data is missing a duration. Click on Greg's. I'm going to add that new column, add that new custom column, and we named that one duration. We used a date resolved minus date received and clicked OK. The last thing I did was I made that data type be a decimal number. When I head back to that query, the new query that we have append, our new duration information for Greg should also be in there. So pretty handy. Very last thing that I want to do is append one is not a super convenient name for me to understand what this file actually is. So I can rename my query right over here. And I'm going to say all call center data. My data right now is in the Power Query editor, but I do not have it in Excel yet. If I want to get my data into Excel, I'm going to have to click on this home tab and check out this close and load button. It is a two part button. If I click the bottom button, I've got a couple of different options. Close and load is going to bring our data into the desktop simply as a table, but I'm going to click close and load too, just so you can see what that looks like. When I click close and load two, it gives me all of these different options for importing my data. Do I want to bring it into the desktop as a table? Do I want to make a pivot table? What exactly am I trying to do? Just for the sake of this class, I'm going to click on table and I'm going to click OK. And just like that, all of our data, as well as all of our queries, our queries and connections are right over here in this queries and connections pane. On the right side of our screen, we have our call center data that has everything combined. We've got that Greg's feedback data, Allison's feedback data, and then we have that original sheet that was in. If I want to right click and delete that, I can. The cool part about this is if my CSV file with Greg's data or Allison's data ever changes and I want to get that refresh data right here in this all call center data appended file, we can do that with just a few clicks. We're going to go ahead and click on that data tab. And just like that, 
you see this refresh all button. Go ahead and click on it, click refresh all. And just like that, you probably saw all of my queries. Super, super cool. I'm kind of curious, what other types of transformations have you done in the Power Query Editor? Maybe you've used it in Power BI, but you just didn't know it existed in Excel as well. And if you're interested in learning all of the ways to utilize both Excel and Power BI for the same data set, don't miss our comprehensive one and a half hour free video on Excel to Power BI. This course is taught by a dynamic trio, Allison, Angelica, and myself. You can access it for free by signing up for a free account and searching for Excel to Power BI in our on-demand learning platform. I can't wait to learn with you next time.